Hi, folks. As we get started, uh, if someone can, if you can raise your hand, if you can hear my voice, I just want to make sure the audio's working okay. Thank you very much, Casey, and uh, a couple other folks there. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, go for it. Okay. I'm assuming you can see my screen. Uh huh. All right, thanks everyone for joining us tonight. Again, this is the HOD webinar for the 2018 Summer Games. So appreciate everyone taking the time out of your busy schedules um, as we prepare for the Summer Games. So again, as Mike said, my name is Steve Bennett. For those of you who don't know me, um, here at Special Olympics as the Senior Director for Competition and Coach Development. And again, uh, Mike introduced himself. Um, I don't believe George or Nate will be joining us, and I'm not sure that Jane will be either, so I will apologize ahead of time we'll make that, it work. that you uh, may have to listen to Mike and myself throughout the webinar. But again, thanks for all of your efforts up to this point, and hopefully this will provide some information uh, that you can share with your other delegation members uh, leading into the Summer Games. Uh, as Steve is moving forward on the uh, uh, webinar, uh, if you have any questions, I'll be monitoring while Steve is talking. Uh, you can either raise your hand, uh, and if we can, we'll open up your line uh, at an appropriate time, or you can just type your question into the question box. Okay. Mm -hmm. well. Sorry, Steve is trying to learn how to use my computer. There we go. Okay, thank you, Mike. Um, so again, uh, just some basic things we're going to go over this evening. Um, just again, to welcome. Uh, we'll go over some of the uh, layouts and maps of the campus, um, some updates in regards to registration, the overall schedule, some of the other activities such as block party, opening ceremony, and some transportation updates, and um, do some questions and answers at the end. So the first thing is again the overall view of the campus map um, from the uh, pre-season webinar, there is one change that I would like to point out here. Um, it's right here in this location. This is going to be for the bus stop for softball skills and those playing at Cockeysville. The previous map and what's in the event guide pointed to this location. Last year and probably two years ago, this location was barricaded off due to construction. So we have moved it from the University Union garage to behind the University Union in the small parking lot. So that's the big difference here on this screen. Um, the other thing from the pre-season webinar um, is we had made reference that the individual skills, we were determining where that would take place. It is being moved to off-site. Um, at Coggiesville Middle School along with uh, most of the other uh, softball team competitions. I think, the, you know, everything else here is pretty much the same, um, except again from last year we're in Towers C and D and um, the Barton House, which is located right over here. Again, this is just an overview um, to show you the location and um, give you an aerial picture of the off-site uh, softball competition at Cockeysville, again, where skills will be conducted, as well as most of the softball competitions. There will be a few of the teams um, that will play on campus. The divisioning team for softball is working in another room here at the office tonight to solidify the divisions and get those schedules uh, solidified so those can be sent out to everyone. And, and one clarification with that, um, it is possible because of all the different weather challenges and such that uh, the team tonight uh, will not have final divisions. There may need to be some um, assessment games or divisioning games played on site. Uh, a lot depends upon what we're able to do this, this coming weekend. So don't be surprised if we don't have final divisions for softball uh, until Saturday morning. Uh, at summer games. So again, the registration process and some updates there. Um, the training registrations were all due uh, by April 26th, so we've we've moved past that. All the outstanding forms were due on May 14th, 
And again, that's for everyone. So I know Mike and the regional sports directors have been working with everyone to ensure that everyone who um, wants to be involved in summer games met those deadlines. Um, so again, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Um, we do have uh, hopefully any score updates for div divisioning purposes were um, turned in by the 29th. And um, we will send out some additional reports to um, everyone um, by May 31st. Um, the on-site registration is where the HODs will come and pick up their keys for the housing, for delegation packets, uh, a few event guides, that type of stuff. Um, same as in the past, we'll be in the University Union in the lobby area. Uh, that will be on June 7th on Thursday. Uh, we are uh, planning to have everyone's shirts available for you as well, um, provided that uh, they are delivered, and um, I'm, I'm sure that will all take place. So again, those will be there at the University Union, and then you guys uh, who have been there in the past um, know the process to get those uh, with a couple helpers and um, other apparatuses that some of you use uh, to get the shirts to the housing uh, residence sites. So, um, Mike, I don't know if, if you want to touch on a few of these registration pieces and sure. we can kind of go back and forth. Uh, sure. So, uh, again, for those of you who have been with us and looking down the list of folks who are on uh, the webinar, it looks like everybody has some experience uh, here. This is no change. Um, the registration process, uh, the registration fee for any overnight delegation members is $65. That only covers a portion of the cost. The estimated total cost for an overnight delegation member is $128 standard fee for um, uh, the day of delegation members, those who are not staying overnight, uh, it really only covers the, is the lunch cost, uh, and um, that's estimated to be 16. We have the three to one ratio as we get the, um, uh, where uh, you're limited to uh, having three athletes for every one supervisory person in your delegation, anything above that, uh, you're going to be uh, charged the full uh, cost of having those additional people on site. Um, we expect by um, no later than Friday uh, to have counts out to folks on that. Um, and then you'll have by Monday, I think it's on another slide, to let us know if anybody's supposed to be scratched. You can go in right now uh, and tell us uh, folks who are supposed to be uh, scratched from your delegation um, after Monday. Uh, anybody who's in there, you're going to be charged for. So if you loaded a bunch of volunteers in uh, that aren't actually attending, need to let us know that they're not coming um, so that we can delete them and not charge your, your group for that. So but again, that's no change from anything that we've done for the last at least three years. Um, and again, you're mon by noon on Monday to have those into us. Uh, actually, Monday, June 4th. Tuesday is June 5th. So. Um, Missed that on the typo there. Um, so just send them by email to your regional sports director. Okay. So what's next? Uh, oh, also, so this is just a reminder for folks. We've gone over this with the athletics uh, personnel. Uh, we announced, actually discussed it at the area directors meeting in March, uh, and uh, shared it. We may have actually shared it in the first HOD webinar. But as a reminder, there are exit criteria for the softball throw and the 50 meter uh, run in athletics. Uh, basically, um, those are uh, fundamental events designed for uh, athletes who don't have the capability, the, the physical ability to do the traditional or, or standard events. Um, but we've had a history of athletes who are far above that ability level um, uh, being entered in those events. So we've established that uh, any athlete who throws the softball uh, more than uh, um, 20 meters, and anybody who runs the 50-meter dash um, uh, in – actually, if you go to the next, it goes into the specifics. Yeah, the 10 next, meters. Yeah, go to the next slide, though, if you would. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that just explains it a little clearer. So anybody um, who throws the softball – the previous slide, the numbers there are where we're eventually going to go. What matters is here. So if anybody uh, – no one has entered – uh, at 20 meters or greater for softball, no one has entered at 10 seconds or less. We caught most of those uh, early on. However, if on site uh, an athlete runs the 50 in 10 seconds or, or less, they're going to be disqualified. They'll get a participation ribbon, but they never should have been entered in that event. 
Um, softball throws, same thing. If anybody throws the softball more than 20 meters, they're going to be disqualified. Um, again, we've, we've tried different angles and different ways to make this work in the past. Uh, hopefully this will take care of it. Cause it and it's hurting the athlete in the sense that there are in events that they really shouldn't be in. They should be in more challenging events. Um, and uh, so anyhow, just don't be surprised. Hopefully, knock on wood, uh, that won't be the case this time, uh, this year, and no one will be actually disqualified. Um, but want to make sure folks are aware of it. Thank you, Mike. Uh, back to um, master schedule. Again, nothing really has changed since uh, the preseason. Um, but again, the delegation registration we talked about on site at the, at the University Union on the 7th, Thursday. And then we will, we will have the HOD meeting, um, same location in a room uh, right beside the lobby, which is the Lock Raven room. And again, just a reminder, this is for HODs only. We do have a limited amount of space. Um, so if you can help us um, uh, with only those HODs and some of our management and staff will be present as well just to keep uh, the space adequate for those that need to attend. Um, going into Friday, again, our first competition is the cheerleading competition. It will be at the Towson Center. Uh, the lunch on Friday is only for the cheerleading delegates. Everyone else is on their own for lunch on Friday. Um, we will have family hospitality open there at the Towson Center. And again, um, on Friday, we will have the dinner at the University Union Susquehanna Dining Hall. And uh, during that time frame, there will be similar to what we did last year, uh, the dance demonstration in the Potomac Room, which is located right uh, adjacent to the dining hall. A block party will be on Friday from 5 to 7, leading into opening ceremony. I will have some merchandise and some other activities there. Um, and then we talk about the um, head coaches meetings. Uh, locations um, have been communicated to um, the head coaches at the webinars and in the event guide as well. Uh, we'll start the, the staging of the athletes, the delegation members who uh, walk in and uh, for the opening ceremony around 6.30. And then we'll begin the ceremony uh, once everyone gets in and uh, announcing the delegations. And I will talk about something else later, but you want to make a note, um, there are uh, several delegations who we need information from to go into the opening ceremony script. I will do similar bus loading um, in the CQ Arena uh, parking lot, lot 20, and that's how the delegations will be dismissed. Um, on Saturday, uh, breakfast will be provided again at the Susquehanna Dining Hall. We'll have the buses, buses start, um, and I apologize, the 6.45, uh, the swimming is not relevant on this slide, but the uh, off-site Cockeysville for softball will begin at 7 a.m. And as Mike mentioned, um, hopefully uh, we're going to be satisfied with uh, the divisioning committee, not have to have um, some preliminary or divisioning games uh, leading into the competition. So uh, family hospitality, again, will move on Saturday from um, the block party area um, in the cheerleading venue over to the Towson Center lot with Olympic Park. Um, again, this year, a little bit changed from last year. The Young Athletes Open House will have two different sessions, first one from 10 to noon, and then the second one from 1 to 3. So uh, we're hoping to see some, some additional participants take advantage of that opportunity and uh, again, start the new generation coming in. Olympic Park, as I mentioned, will be in Lot 21 right outside the Towson Center, uh, family hospitality, some games and activities, merchandise, and some um, other fun things leading into the dinner, which again, we're uh, pleased to announce that Famous Days has agreed to provide dinner for everyone on Saturday evening. Again, that will be in Lot 21, not back at the dining hall. Um, again, provided we have good weather. Uh, for inclement weather, uh, the plan is to move into the Towson Center. The HOD meeting will occur that evening. Usually it's, it's a good 15 to 30 minutes at the most, um, provided there's no major issues or concerns, but it's a good touch base um, to see how everything's going in, uh, in preparation for the, the last day on Sunday. Uh, there will be the uh, softball evening game and a home run derby. Um, those, those times are approximate. Again, once they decide on the schedule, uh, we'll be able to share that out with everyone. The Olympic Park and Dance, again in Lot 21 at the Towson Center. 
And again, the uh, theme of the dance is Tropical Island. So I'm sure we'll hear some Beach Boys and some other good stuff. Um, the family reception, as in years past, will be in the CQ Arena in the concourse area from 7.30 to 8.30. And moving into Sunday, again, breakfast at the dining hall, buses out to the softball, the regular competitions at the other venues, um, and then uh, Olympic Park and Lot 21 with family hospitality and some other activities. And then um, the family briefing is something new this year. Obviously, this is uh, every four years we have the USA Games. Um, so that's only for those family members who have athletes or partners uh, that will be traveling to Seattle as part of Team Maryland for the USA Games. But if you do have individuals um, who fit in that capacity, uh, that will be at the University Union in the Potomac Room. And Steve, just so folks know, um, those family members have been contacted directly. It's not something you need to. To, uh, connect with them on. We just want to make sure you're aware of everything that's going on. Great. Thank you, Mike. Okay, we'll just go into some summer games updates. Um, again, we talked about the, the dinner on Friday. We'll be at the University Hall, or University Union, excuse me, uh, the block party leading into opening ceremony, and then the Olympic Park and Lot 21. Uh, we will have a DJ for Olympic Park and the dance. Um, like we said, a lot of activities, some food vendors that will have product for sale as well as uh, Famous Dave's providing uh, the dinner for everyone. Um, again, the inclement weather plan will be that the some activities will be able to move be moved inside to the Towson Center, and that's where we will um, stage uh, the delegations for the parade uh, going into opening ceremony. So again, I mentioned this earlier. Um, one of the Two, two things we need from, from you guys is um, by June 1st, we would like to have it, but no later than the HOD meeting on June 7th. And that's how many total delegation members you have that will be, be attending the opening ceremony. And within those numbers, how many individuals use wheelchairs or have um, uh, significant mobility challenges so that they can make accommodations and make sure that everyone um, has proper seating and can sit together or at least close by. Um, you can send that information to your regional sports director, and um, if not, uh, we can get those by June 7th at the HOD meeting, but the, the sooner the better. The other thing, as I said, I know Kira has sent out some information from our offices. Um, by June 4th, uh, in order to put uh, some nice touches into the opening ceremony script, um, some fun facts about your delegation or your county, or area program, and you can send those directly to Kira Northrup, um, and her email address is, is listed there. But again, it's it's a nice touch um, to bring some highlights to what your, your program has been doing um, this year and any highlights you want to address during the summer games. Um, one of the things I think everyone's aware, but if not, healthy athletes will not be offered this year at summer games. Um, however, we do have a, a fantastic opportunity um, to um, extend and continue the services provided for healthy athletes. Um, it will be held on September 22nd. Exact times will be communicated later. Um, it will be a standalone event, so there won't be any competition opportunities that will conflict with individuals um, uh, taking advantage of the medical services and the screenings that are offered. Uh, but it will be at Towson, Uni or Towson University in the Towson Center. And we are, again, pleased uh, to announce that Care First uh, will be our, our sponsor and our partner with the Special Mix Maryland Healthy Expo is what we're titling that. So, again, um, it's, it's the same location as when you have dinner on Saturday night um, during summer games. That will be this location for um, the Healthy Expo. A few more update, updates. Um, the uh, From Barton, those of you staying in Barton, it's a quick walk um, to the University Union. Um, and then again, the Union Garage is open um, on all levels for parking. Uh, the shuttle bus will stop at Barton. Um, and uh, again, they will be uh, shuttle stops throughout campus. Uh, we will have signs up. They'll pick up individuals, take them to their um, competition venues and other locations throughout campus. And again, we'll have a um, 
shuttle for family members and other individuals, volunteers, et cetera, that will park up in lots 13 and 14, and uh, again, deliver those to that side of campus. Um, the, the thing I know there was some hesitancy last year, but those who did take advantage of it, it worked really well. Um, the shuttles um, are planned to arrive at the bus stops every 15 minutes. So that should be about the longest you should need to wait uh, for a bus to pick up um, to take you to your next destination. A few more updates with transportation. Um, again, we talked about the loops running um, from the 13 to 14. Uh, and they will be doing a drop-off on Friday at Lot 21 for the cheerleading competitions. So there will be limited parking there. And then again, that loop will continue uh, to the housing facilities, et cetera, running through about 4 o'clock. Then that loop will start going to uh, the dining halls and back up to uh, uh, the CQ Arena area uh, to take people to the block party and enjoy those activities leading into the um, opening ceremony. So if there are any uh, mobility concerns, uh, George will be addressing those at the HOD meeting on the 7th. And again, um, departing from the opening ceremony will occur in lot 20. Uh, the buses will come up, pick up on the sidewalk, and uh, the delegations will be dismissed from the opening ceremony, similar to last year, by announcements um, from the MCs for the opening ceremony. Again, similarly, shuttle systems um, running throughout campus on Saturday. Um, we will also have those um, servicing through um, 9.30 to help people get back from the Olympic Park areas and activities and dinner um, back to lots 13 and 14 and back to your um, housing uh, locations. Same thing on Sunday for transportation. And again, if I didn't mention it earlier, I don't think I did. All of the uh, shuttle systems and buses on campus from Towson do have wheelchair accessibility. Um, the paratransit uh, number that we have had available in the past, but very uh, minimal use, if any at all, um, will only be available on Friday. Um, that we They do not run that service during the weekends. So again, just know that all the shuttles uh, do have wheelchair accessibility. If you're on campus, you can pack people in because you can stand, but those going to Cockeysville uh, will not be able to stand. Everyone must be seated. And again, there, there's where I talked about the paratransit um, opportunities. The big, the big thing this year is for lot 19, which is the parking lot right beside um, the soccer stadium where bocce is, is uh, competed with or is offered as a competition. We will provide parking passes to the HODs and we will hand those out on the 7th at the HOD meeting. There is very limited parking available in that lot. So we are um, looking at the counts per delegation uh, based on the competitors. And we'll take a percentage of those and issue those passes per delegation accordingly. Uh, we hope to have that out to everyone by June 4th. Um, again, there's only about 50 spots available, give or take, and um, we will ask you to, um, once you get the numbers, uh, as the HOD, you decide accordingly, um, whether it's the coaches or who needs those within your delegation. And, and with that, just a couple reminders with that also uh, that came up when we were doing the bocce webinar as well. Uh, and so this has already been shared with your bocce coaches. Um, number one, if you have anyone who needs uh, uh, wheelchair parking or handicap parking, that needs to come from the batch of parking passes that uh, are being issued to your delegation. Uh, and then secondly, um, uh, unlike I know some of the challenges folks had previously when we were over at uh, the, um, uh, no, it's a touch screen, Steve. Oh. It's magic. I'm sorry, Steve's still learning to use my computer. <laughs> anyway, hit page up. There we go. Back to there. Um, so I'm sorry. Um, but unlike that, lots 13 and 14 are right up the hill. We've got the shuttle loop going around. Um, and uh, folks, there's, there's plenty of, uh, of easy access parking in 13 and 14 at the top of that hill that's the 
parking lot behind the stadium. Um, the, the first stop when the shuttle picks them up there is going to be at Bachi. So um, it's uh, it's very quick. Uh, we just have had major issues down there uh, at the Bachi venue with people, way more people trying to get into that parking lot than it can handle. We'll have guards there as well to uh, monitor that. And anybody who's caught abusing the parking passes um, uh, or if a car is in there without a parking pass, it'll be towed. Uh, and your pass will be revoked. So uh, um, it, it, it's a challenge that we really need to work on and we need to resolve and this I think will take care of it. So, And also give you each area or each delegation uh, access to some close by parking. Again, we will also have um, right across from lot 19 is basically a loading dock, um, but we have had individuals try to park in that area as well in the past. Um, same thing as with lot 19, if you are, if somebody parks in that lot without a pass, uh, they will be towed at the owner's expense. So again, just nobody wants to be in that situation and, and we don't want to have to make that call. So the more uh, you can help us uh, disseminate that information, it is appreciated. Um, there is also uh, a possibility of passes for certain locations in lot 21 at the Towson Center. Um, specifically on Friday for cheerleading. Um, due to graduation schedules, we have a tight window on Friday morning to set up um, some of our activities and tents and some other operational things going on. Uh, so there will be some limited parking there. We will also have guards um, there to help uh, uh, alleviate some of the challenges we've had in the past. Similarly, the buses will come up. They'll drop off right on the corner. Um, if not, they'll come through and exit out the back of the of the lot. Um, so we appreciate everyone's assistance with that. Okay, and Steve, Anna uh, reminded us here uh, for the um, since we're talking on parking and such, the um, uh, for Thursday night's HOD meeting, um, there will be a parking code that's necessary for the parking garage. We will send that out to you as soon as we have it. Um, uh, that will uh, take care of that. So we don't know what it is right now. Um, they change it each year so that people can't go and abuse it throughout the, throughout the year. Uh, but we'll get that to you um, uh, in advance of the HOD meeting. And for those of you who don't know, I haven't parked there. There's a little parking kiosk as you come in on the bottom level, uh, about the as you're going up, right before you go up the ramp uh, to get to the second level. So thanks, Anna, for the reminder. And I will also remind you, please pay attention. There are some signs indicating this, but they have changed some of the parking areas within the Universal Union Garage. So when you're parking, please pay close attention to the marked signs indicating uh, where the spaces are available for parking. The other thing, maybe it's hit here. Um, but again, we talked about the end of opening ceremony how the delegations will be released to head back, uh, get their buses and shuttles back to their uh, dormitories. Um, if all goes well, it could happen in about three uh, bus trips, give or take. Um, the, the one thing I do want to mention is similarly to the towing, we will also enforce that going up the hill into lot 20 at the CQ Arena. We've had individuals park there. It is clearly marked. Uh, we will have additional signs there that no parking is allowed on the hill going up into lot 20 uh, where the block party will take place and where the staging for the opening ceremony will occur. And that applies to all three days as well. Uh, we've had issues with that on Saturday and Sunday. And again, the person's car will be towed. Yeah. And, and it, it's very important because the buses can't get up there and get out. And it's also for emergency vehicles, fire trucks, ambulance, that type of thing. They need to have um, access quickly in and out. So um, we appreciate your assistance with that as well. So again, uh, some updates here with Olympic Park and the dance. We talked about the dance theme, uh, some of the activities. There will be a movie uh, for those who want to go inside and have more of a quiet time um, during the Olympic Park time frame and the dance. Uh, we talked about the dance demo, again, the tropical island theme, and the young athletes two different sessions. Again, this is just a flyer about the Olympic Park, the Kangaroo Kids, which I know is a big hit. Um, they will be available. We'll have... Uh, is there anybody there from Montgomery County? Frank, uh, it is your job. 
as soon as we hang up to contact Mr. Baker in your county and make sure he knows that the kangaroo kids will be there. Oh, Pam, you're on as well, so you can you can both call him. I know he's waiting to know. So again, there will be food for purchase, games, and a lot of nice uh, fun activities for everyone. This is just kind of the basic outline or um, overview of the layouts. That's bear pong that says there, right? Yes, bear pong, not beer pong. <laughs> so again, creativity uh, with our marketing and development team. Uh, those are some of the activities leading into the opening ceremony at the block party. And then the layout for the Olympic Park on Saturday and Sunday. Couple updates again. Family hospitality. I have a lot of uh, good activity, but the the main hub will be there in Lot 21 at Towson Center. Uh, there will also be a family uh, webinar that Susan Holland will be um, driving for the families. That's Monday night, by the way. Uh, I don't know offhand what time it is, but it's Monday night, and, and that's gone out to the family members, at least for whom we have uh, email addresses and such. Talked about the family reception as well. And again, um, similarly to the family briefing for USA Games, the family reception on Saturday night is for family members only. Um, it's, there's some good information sharing, and it's more of not a formal uh, presentation, but it's not for athletes and partners and just come and sit and hang out and um, take advantage of some of the food that's available there that's donated through Chick-fil-A. But um, again, that's for family members only, so your assistance with that would be great as well. Uh, I know Susan's working on sending out the family facts as well. And again, we'll have merchandise throughout the event um, on Friday and Saturday at the block party in Olympic Park. And we're potentially gonna have some um, items um, out for sale at uh, the Cockeysville site uh, for softball. Meals, we talked about that. Um, Saturday and Sunday, everyone will get their lunches. Friday, lunch is only for cheerleading. Uh, those staying overnight will be able to partake in the breakfast on Saturday and Sunday and dinner on Friday and Saturday. Uh, there are um, opportunities for individuals to purchase meals. Again, whether it's through the food trucks or at the University Union, and these are the approximate um, costs uh, that you can see there. And again, um, just caught an error. Uh, concessions are expected to be available at Loyola Blakefield. No, we are not returning to Loyola Blakefield. Uh, we are at uh, Burdick for swimming. Uh, there may be a small, very condensed, um, it's more of a smoothie station that Towson has than a concession area. So again, you're right there beside the University Union um, if anybody wants to go and pur uh, purchase uh, meals or food at that time. Um, control Center, again, um, we, we, we remind everyone, as the HODs, that's your, your point to make contact with the staff and the management team, not a hangout place um, for anybody. Um, so we ask you to be the liaisons or the individuals to come um, if there's a need to, um, to address us for any concerns you may have or any questions you may have. Um, it's not for coaches or athletes or family members to come up. Uh, they have the family opportunities for the families. And again, the coaches with the, um, uh, the competition management teams. Housing again are, is in tower C and D in the Barton uh, housing location. Uh, everyone should have received your housing from Jane Dunn. I know I've seen a, a, a lot of emails going back and forth, so thank everyone. Thanks to everyone uh, for working with Jane uh, to make sure we uh, have everyone housed. And um, again, if you have any questions, um, please communicate to Jane. I know she's been working diligently and putting <laughs> the massive puzzle together uh, to ensure that everyone um, is housed appropriately. Um, a reminder, um, housing keys are to be returned to the front desk of your housing location on Sunday upon checkout. Um, and we don't want to have to charge anyone. So as HODs, please remind coaches to make sure that all the keys um, have been returned, so that there are no charges. 
and Mike already talked about the three to, three to one ratio. Uh, just briefly, again, we talked about the USA Games family briefing. Uh, we do have the athletes participating that are representing Maryland um, for the USA Games uh, shortly after the summer games uh, in the sports of athletics or track and field, bocce, softball, and swimming. Um, that's not our only sports, but those are the ones that will be here at the summer games. I know we've talked about it, but again, just to make sure everyone's in the loop, the delegation is responsible for the athletes uh, that are part of Team Maryland, as far as chaperoning, uh, making sure they get to their meals, um, and communicating and coordinating with the coaches for Team Maryland for the USA Games in swimming and athletics for the relay teams and relay teams only. And then for bocce, it would be for the bocce doubles portion only. Otherwise, um, your coaches. Um, same uh, same operating procedures as in the past, but those are the only times where there is any type of change in regards to those. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Casey's asking a question. Would they be with us during the Casey? I'm not sure what your question is. I'm going to go ahead and open up your mic. And Casey, you should be able to. Yes. During the opening ceremonies, will be will they be coming in with the delegation, or are they going to be separate? Yeah, any any athletes um, that are part of Team Maryland going to USA Games, they are with you as the delegation, not as Team Maryland for the opening ceremony, any meals, anything other than, like I said, the doubles for bocce and the relays for swimming and athletics. Otherwise, it's standard operational procedures. The athletes who make up Team Maryland within your delegation are with you the entire rest of the summer games. Perfect, thank you. You bet, thanks for the question. Event guide um, has been distributed. And again, I do reiterate the one correction um, on the map. Uh, again, at the HOD meeting, we'll have updated maps to hand out. And that's only for that location of the pickup behind the University Union in the small lot versus behind or in front of the uni University Union garage. Um, so everyone should have received the event guide. If you have not, uh, you can let your uh, regional sports director know, but we did send that out, I believe, last Friday. So everyone should have that. I know it, I know at least one person got it because they were excited that they got it so early, um, and I uh, appreciate that. Uh, medical, we do have a full contingent of medical. Uh, Pam Greenwood, um, who's our medical director here for Special Olympics Maryland, um, also serving in that capacity for USA Games, um, working with Jeff Abel to ensure that uh, we have coverage. Uh, but again, as always, uh, remember to remind your delegation members, stay hydrated, even if they're not thirsty. Sometimes, you know, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. It's better to uh, continue to drink the liquids than to find anyone in um, dehydration mode. And again, we, we ask you to bring your own sunscreen and any bug repellent. Um, again, with the weather, uh, especially down at the soccer stadium, there may be some standing water. So we want to make sure that um, everyone's prepared for that. The inclement weather plans are in the event guide. So make sure that you, you take a look at that. Uh, we'll continue to review and monitor that. Um, it's been a very challenging year for us, as, as well as you guys well know. Uh, but we'll review that at the HOD meeting on Thursday as well. Um, but as a reminder, um, only the Towson University staff, staff of Special Olympics Maryland, and the games management team will decide and inform of, you know, uh, disseminate that information if any plans have changed. Um, we, do, we ask you guys, if you have concerns, to, to communicate to us before I communicate to anyone else, uh, just so that we have the standard. Uh, communication going out to everyone and keep everybody on the same page. Um, again, as always, uh, everyone's probably aware of this, but if there's lightning or thunder, um, we have to wait uh, to mandate 30 minutes from the last strike or last last sighting before we can resume um, any activities. Um, and again, we didn't have any issues last year that I was made aware of, but I know we have had in the past um, with certain individuals. So. Again, we just ask that you help us and, and have your delegation members um, respect the decisions, even if they don't necessarily agree with it. 
Um, it is for the best interest of all spectators and, and individuals there to make sure that everyone stay, stays safe. And that includes if there's pop-up tents to remove those. Um, again, um, we just don't want to have anybody injured and we look out for everyone's safety. Okay, uh, Steve, uh, Carol Piacesi has a question. Carol, your microphone should be open. Are you there? Sorry, I'm having I'm having a problem with the um, my question my question was is there gonna be a possibility for us to purchase a meal ticket for the day of Kathy's ahead of time? Sorry, purchase meal ticket. Uh, uh Carol uh, the, and could you type in your question and we'll Okay. Um, the answer is yes. I want to make sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think it's somehow by having your line open and our phone open uh, it went into some kind of a weird feedback loop. <laughs> so if you can type them, in, type in your question. Uh, uh, I, I think it was related to purchasing uh, dinner tickets or, or breakfast tickets in advance, additional ones. Um, the answer is yes. Uh, and um, uh, but. Again, if you can type in your question, we can try to get it specifically. If for some reason you can't type it in, you can send us a note afterwards, and I'll uh, we'll answer that. Yeah, meal tickets for day of athletes. Um, uh, yeah, you can purchase them in advance. Uh, you can also for dinners, you can purchase them uh, on site uh, at the uh, uh, at the venues. And again, with the event guide, um, again, you guys should all have those. Um, we're looking to send that out. Um, tomorrow um, with all of the coaches, chaperones, and other individuals um, within the delegation so that everyone should have um, a copy of that. If you could also remind it so that there's not different copies floating out there, we will send out the same one that you guys received. And again, we're aware of that one change with the uh, location of the uh, shuttle pickup for off-site softball. Oh, the map. Or the map, yep. Yeah. I think it's actually described properly under transportation, just the map has it marked incorrectly. And with that, again, um, we'll see, we'll give a few seconds here if there's any additional questions. Um, again, hopefully you're aware of who your regional sports director is. Um, if there are any uh, new members, uh, we have their information here. And again, uh, kudos to everyone uh, battling through the weather for the outdoor activities and sports leading up to summer games. It's been a challenge for everyone and uh, for continuing on doing what you guys do as leaders of your uh, area and county programs. And again, uh, let's make this a great event for everyone. And I look forward to seeing everyone on Thursday, if not sooner, and uh, having a great summer game. And as we're waiting for any other questions, one thing not to, to bring things down a little bit, but um, if folks could keep uh, in your thoughts and prayers the, uh, the folks in Ellicott City, uh, Howard County, um, uh, both folks who live in that area, as well as I know several members of our management team, um, uh, Rick McCauley, uh, Tommy Baker, Anna McCauley and such are involved with some of the cleanup effort there. Uh, and just keep them in, their, in, in your thoughts and prayers. Um, uh, luckily, uh, the, um, the incident was in terms of loss of life was low, but still uh, it's a devastating situation. Um, but so we don't end on, on the negative. Um, I did want to say thank you to everybody, since I don't see any questions here. Thank you to everybody for your, um, uh, your hard work throughout the season. I know many of you that I see on here uh, aren't just HODs, you're also coaches. Uh, and I know working to um, uh, prepare your, um, your teams and your athletes uh, and such, uh, Steve will uh, send the slides and the link to the recording out to folks, uh, but we do want to um, make sure if you have any questions, your best way to get uh, get them through is here to your regional sports director, and they'll get them to us uh, yeah, for anything uh, that we might have. But again, thank you very much, and uh, we are thrilled to give you uh, 15 minutes of your evening back. So. Um, Yeah, uh, and I'm sorry, Carol typed in her question. Yeah, uh, uh, there will be an opportunity. We'll send some notes out on this on how to um, uh, make requests for purchases of, of meal tickets in advance uh, so they can all be bulk uh, uh, charged to your area uh, rather than you having to put cash out. So we'll have that. Okay.
uh, thank you much. And uh, again, we look forward to uh, seeing everybody in about 10 days.